Hey, what's up everyone? It's your boy Darkpool Algo, and thanks for joining me on another weekend watch list building session. Today is Saturday, December 18th, 2021. Holiday week. Cannot believe where the year has gone, can you? It's over already. Wow. Uh, it's been a great year so far, and the channel's grown. Really appreciate the support, YouTube. Love you guys out there, gals and gals, everyone. Thanks for the support. Uh, today we are going to go over the top five stocks for this week. We're also going to be looking at some specific options contracts. And with that being said, just make sure going into this week you guys stay safe. Everyone, protect your investment. Don't try to cram in a year's worth of trading in the last two weeks, even if it is a Santa rally, right? Just protect your capital. There's always another trade. We will be going into some educational series coming up this year as well. Also, uh, we will be looking at the beast numbers, which is predictive entries and exits for um, options contracts. Not only predictive, but spot on levels, right? I'll get into that as the week, as the weeks progress, helping a buddy out here with that. Um, as always, we try to provide a quality service to you, so we, we like to pass through any sort of savings we get. We have a code that you can get 10% off at checkout, and I'll just tell you that um, <laughs> uh, we took some pretty big wins last week. Um, for example, Facebook, 340 calls from 85 cents to three bucks. Those actually ended up running to six. So spot on. <laughs> it's great if you're in a small account and you're trying to grow a small account because you're able to see um, where you should be entering and where you should be exiting. See, I knew that was going to happen. It's been quiet all day. But I knew the, sec the, the second that I started recording that it, my phone was going to blow up. Um, just, yeah, if, if you're trying to grow a small account, um, if you don't have a whole lot of time to trade, I know that a lot of people use the service if they don't have a lot of time to trade. Maybe they have an hour in the morning or an hour in the afternoon. Those are the most typically volatile times in the stock market. So uh, last week I was able to be done by you know 1030 Eastern Standard Time which is, it makes for a pretty easy day. It lets you focus on some of the other things in life. So uh, we'll get into that more as the weeks progress. But today, uh, just to remind everybody, quad witching is over. Uh, this Thursday, I believe we have some economic data coming out. So uh, I looked through the calendar. I didn't see a whole lot of um, events that could really rock the market. I believe there are some earnings. I'll have to double check on this. Also, um, going forward, we're going to be looking at very specific uh, options uh, as far as the algorithmic options will be look or algorithmic stocks will be looking at those. Obviously, you want to look at the divergences. Those are tried and true that definitely um, allow us to see where smart money is entering and exiting positions, and we can uh, we can scale in accordingly. Uh, I will also be working on some reduction quality for the YouTube channel. We will going be going into more of an introductory session. Um, recapping last week's stock picks during this session and really trying to tighten things up and provide you a little bit better more fluid experience uh, with some raised production value I, obviously we've listened to your comments in the comment section below yay and we will um we take them into consideration 2022 is going to be a huge year for us huge 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 and i personally want to thank everyone that's been with me from the beginning really 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 appreciate it Try to figure out something special for the end of the year. Okay, the stocks that we will always be looking at going forward every week, we're going to look at them. I may need to do another video uh, because there's five or six of them. Uh, I just also want to make sure that one, we're able to pick, you know, the freshest, hottest, you know, ones that are have the best opportunity or the biggest chance to make an explosive move to the upside using the algorithm showing us where that divergence occurs. Also, it's important to become familiar with, you know, a bread and butter handful of stocks. So after careful consideration, we've chosen Google, NVIDIA, Facebook, Tesla, AMD, and SPY. Now I know those are large caps and everybody's account's not big. I promise you. To accommodate for that, I've loaded up a couple of my, a couple of my accounts with $500 so that we can do a $500 to whatever we, ch whatever we choose to do challenge. These um, Will one of them is a cash account and one of them is um, so if you want to follow along, you probably need a normal margin account through your broker Weeble or Thinkorswim or even Robinhood. 
Uh, I believe if you have Robinhood Gold, you can do options trading with $500 in your account. It is a margin account, so you're limited to three day trades every five trading days. I have an account like that set up, so we'll be using that for part of our uh, challenge and we'll also be using a cash account for part of our challenge. So what I'm doing is trying to show you that with proper planning, with looking at the tools that you have available through this channel, through the algorithm, through the beast numbers, you're able to successfully grow that $500 into a larger account. We're not going to put a time frame on it. We're not going to put any pressure on it. It's just going to happen. As it happens, I will be very diligent about letting you know plays that I'm paper trading getting into. Uh, disclaimer, this is not financial advice. Do not trade anything. I'm not a financial advisor. This is all for purposes of entertainment only. Thank you for keeping me safe. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, I will do a very good job of keeping that information available to everyone. I know we've got a group of swing traders. I know we've got some doctors. We've got some lawyers. We've got some people that can only trade for like 30 minutes a day in the morning and then maybe checking on stuff in the afternoon. So we're going to be very accommodating to that. Okay, this intro has taken forever. I apologize, but I felt there was a lot of information that I wanted to get out to you, and this is a great time to do it. So we're going to do the intro, and we're going to jump back right into the place. We'll see you in a second. All right, welcome back. Welcome back. I, I'm old AF. Welcome back, Kata. Welcome back, Kata. So... All right, so what we're looking at here that you see in front of you, this is the smart money dark pull and block trade algorithm provided by Flow Trade. This is what allows us to find divergence in retail trading versus um, large institutional hedge funds and smart money. What we look for is we look for divergence where price action is heading in one direction and the algorithm is heading in the other. That is called divergence. Divergence must be traded out. So stocks that we have for this week. Are you ready? We're looking at DocuSign. We're also going to be looking at AMBA, Adobe, Etsy Bay, and then CAR is the final one. So uh, if you're new to the stream, let me just go over what, what you're seeing here. It's like there's a lot of squiggly lines. Dark Bull, what does all that mean? Um, what it means is divergence. I'm going to pop this over on the single chart layout so that you can see a little bit better about what we're looking at, okay? Uh, the white bars are price action. The purple line is the regular algorithm line. Blue lines across the screen are dark pool block trades. Red lines are regular block trades. And yellow is usually what I use to mark the charts up, okay? From what I understand, a little bird told me that there is a beta version of flow trade already being data tested. And by little birdie, I mean I'm that little birdie as well. They've been data testing it and um, it should be releasing pretty soon. Um, it's streamlined UI, a lot better functionality. Uh, from what I understand, it's uh, behind the scenes. The algorithm hasn't really changed. It's just got a fresh new look that is, uh, it's way better. <laughs> I mean, you've, you see how much I struggle with drawing lines like, oh, um, keyboard, shortcut, quick commands, things like that. So, very excited about that. That should be coming up pretty soon. All right, what we're looking at here is DocuSign. The divergence we see is when the uh, purple algorithm is moving in the opposite direction of white price action. Where that, where the two have diverged is called the divergence zone. And when that happens, I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to keep it simple. Uh, when divergence happens, price action will revert to where the divergence occurred. The algorithm is a leading predictive indicator, which means that the price action will follow the algo, not the other way around. Okay. So with that being said, very interesting little thing on Docu. The reason I chose Docu is um, into the last week, it's it's got a move going. It went from 140 to 155. It's getting at some key uh, resistance levels. If it can break them, I think that it can start to get a larger move to the upside. The algorithm is starting to run into some resistance, so we're looking at probably front running this a little bit. We've got a we've got a nice little regular block trade base coming in here at 145, 76. And then, oh, one other thing. Hey, listen, um, uh, white lines are bad for you, but in the stocks and options world with the algorithm, 
white lines are good. <laughs> no, white line, if I draw a white line on the screen like I'm about to do right now, that means that there's a regular and a dark pool block trade that have printed at, at the same level or close enough that um, it's a very major area. It's an inflection point. So I put them on the chart here. I also mark it up on my chart, uh, my normal charts, and just to be aware that price action will interact with that level and know that um, not only retail but large uh, hedge funds have found that level important and they've invested dark pools and regular block trades at that level currently with that 150, 151 level on DocuSign. Okay, uh, we have some dark pool block trades at 155.37. We've also got support at 139.77. Um, I was in the habit of dropping these um, lines at the point where they occurred. However, I realized that this, um, those inflection points, those dark pull levels, um, have been tapped a couple times. So anytime I see a print that has, in the past, looking backwards, affected price action, I'm going to go ahead and draw it across the screen. Okay, so kind of, kind of what we used to do um, prior to a couple weeks ago. Okay. Uh, price action is steadily inclining, right? It's steadily, uh, steadily climbing, right? We've got the algo, which is, yep, it's in a bullish uptrend. It's coming up to a key level of resistance. Last time it was at this level, this resistance or the support failed, and we had this major gap down. Going to be interesting to see what happens when the algorithm goes to take out that level again. If it gets over it, I think we could see that explosive magnet to pull price action up out of this previous overhead resistance, right? See what I'm doing here? I'm marking my chart up. I'm showing you that we've got upward trend line support. And there's this funky little channel right there, right? That channel to this level here, right? is the previous high. Above that previous high, there's a major gap to fill, okay? That's it for DocuSign. As far as some other, um, some other, I'll also like to show some technical analysis for DocuSign. Uh, this is the 15 minute chart. We are right at up at point of control in VWAP, right? On the 15 minute chart, very bullish looking. SAC positive moving averages, 821, 34, 50, 200 rising Ichimoku cloud coming right out of a demand zone. We smacked right into a, you know, a wall at 156. Uh, we can break above that. I think we can continue to move on to the upside from a support resistance um, perspective. Looking at the Keltner channels, uh, what we've got here is we've got uh, the squeeze pro histogram is neutral but decreasing right into a longer term uh, high mid high mid eh, low compression squeeze that if those moving averages continue to stay stacked positive we can expect that squeeze to fire to the long side we're coming up out of the bottom of the or out of the top of the four hour keltner channels we're using that as support this thing is annoying me i really need to i need to find someone who can do pine script and trading view and teach me how to move this dang label over because it's just like on the weirdest time frames it doesn't want to move if I pop it up to an hour right then it goes where it needs to be but if I leave it down here it doesn't so um, I think I'm just gonna turn it off for now all I was really using it for was to show ATR and uh, I've got another ooh, got another little tool I'm gonna use to start showing ATR going forward so we're coming right out of the top of the four hour Kettler channels right off of the monthly bottom of support these are major support resistance zones the MACD is neutral and decreasing, and we're already in fire is, is um, decreasing as well. Maybe consolidation. If not, we're going to pop right into the daily Keltner channel bottom, right? So if we can get above, you know, we're going to have to fight our way through this. So the 160, 160 to 168 zone, right? We got to get up and through. Hopefully that some of those squeezes will start firing off to the long side and get us through that. Contrarian, if we reject that level, then we may just squish in between the Keltner channels for a little bit longer before we get a chance to make that move to the upside, okay? The other thing I wanted to show you is, uh, what were we looking at, DocuSign? Um, this is my new favorite chart layout for Thinkorswim. 
Um, it's one that several professional traders use. Uh, there's a lot of data going on here. I mean, there is a ton of data going on here. I want to, let's see, I don't want to get rid of all of this. Let's just save. Come on, sucker. Thank you. We'll save driving set as zones old, right? And then we'll go back to default and we will clear drawing set. Okay. All right, that helps clear things up a little bit. What we've got going on here is we've got a lot of data coming through. We've got green 10x bars all the way across the mid, so 10 minutes up to two hours. As those fire off, that daisy chain effect should, should kick in and create higher time frame 10x bars. We're coming back into the ATR zone. We're currently trading at negative two ATR. We want to rally to the 21 EMA, which is at 190, uh, 190 level. Coming back up into slingshot squeeze, right? slingshot squeeze release we can get up above the 21 on the four hour we're going to have resistance at the 34 and then the 50 but that's you know that's 175 190 mid compression squeeze is coming up i think that we're in a pretty good position with docusign that i like it going into this week okay moving on to the next one is amba which is Ambarella inc never heard of them before but from what i see they've made some pretty big moves we've looked at it in the past all this previous divergence has already played out. We're looking at this new current divergence and look at that algorithm go. So this tells me that smart money has been net buying into Amberilla, <laughs> right? Amba, uh, back since the beginning of the month. Nice bullish divergence coming off. Uh, look at the algo. It looks as though it's holding its trend line, right? So that could be very bullish for us. One, two, three, release. Looking for that Wu-Tang pattern reversal. If you're not sure what that is, uh, I'll go into it in here in one second no real dark pool of regular block trades coming in to help us out but we do have this uh dow it's a dow one two three reversal but we call it the wu-tang reversal because you'll see here in a second what we're looking at we're looking at that w with that large move to the upside to complete that divergence so basically the break of 191 isk and we get that longer move to the upside right okay so amba on the 15 minute chart we're beneath, right? We're below the Ichimoku cloud, but we're barely got above the 50. So we're looking for a slingshot squeeze release to pop us up over our exponential moving averages to get them back stack positive. And then we're gonna ride that move all the way up in this cloud to the 200 SMA coming in at 195. The reason I chose the stock is there's a $10 move before we hit that 200 SMA resistance on the 15 minute chart. And looking at it from a Keltner channel perspective, you know, we ran up, we rallied right it to the top, the daily top, four hour top, rejected that came, fell through the weekly, right down through the bottom of the four hours, tried to get back up in, and now we're consolidating, right? We're consolidating at the four hour Keltner channel bottom, slingshot squeeze getting ready to fire off. We've got our ready aim fire getting ready to fire off as well, and the MACD is consolidating. So what we like about this is that we're at a key support zone, and if we can take out 184 we've got a nice move up into the weekly keltner channel which just comes in at 190 and then trying to make it up to the daily mid and four hour mid at that 195 level so we're looking for that divergence to really help us out here from a technical standpoint on my new favorite chart setup for thinkorswim we've got mid compression mid compression mid time frame squeezes in effect and mid to high compression squeezes or excuse me Low to mid compression squeezes on the upper time frames. Low to mid compression squeezes on the middle time frames. Um, buy signals on the low end from 10x bars. We have a zone down here that we've pulled back, right? Found support, and we're trying to make our move back up. So I'm looking to target the 50, which is also the 21 EMA. So this 195 level, it's a you know, it's a $15 move. This stock has an ATR of $15. Definitely could easily make that move back up. Does it consolidate for a little bit more or do we get a continued move to the downside? Um, that's a very real possibility, but the downside risk is 170. So we have a $10 move to the downside before we hit longer term support. If we do get that quick pullback, and I would feel a lot more comfortable going long on this. So 
We may be a little bit early, but I think that this one's got some juice left in it, and I think we're going to have a pretty good time with it. Okay, next one that we're moving on to is Adobe. Now, I'm not exactly sure what happened to Adobe, but it looks like um, maybe some earnings took place, and maybe Adobe got hit with a brick. Uh, so we'll look at it here in a second. All right. Failed Wu-Tang pattern reversal actually gapped down, so earnings came in and kicked its butt. So what we've got here is we've got this money line vertical, uh, vertical algorithm line uh, is indicative of a lot of volume from uh, a bunch of hedge funds and smart money getting together at the same time saying, hey, Adobe's out of value, let's get back into it. Well, yeah, it is. It went from 700 to 556 discount right if i'd be buying adobe if it was at a discount as well so let's look at what the algorithm is doing so they've been steady buying into this since the first uh, large influx of um, capital came into it towards the end of the week we've got some dark pool levels up here that we're going to be targeting and they're going to act as a magnet so that 614.86 level and this 630 level those are our dark pool magnets we've got a regular block trade that's going to provide us some support and resistance as we get out of this you know this level that we're in here that's a 556.64 level. Oh, I used the wrong color. Oh, man. All right, so pretty decent uptrending support. We got to get out of this zone here. There's a zone from this regular block trade at 556 all the way up to about the previous high of 574. So either we slow grind up or we launch through it. Okay, earnings happened. I believe this is earnings. I'll have to look. I believe, let's see, Adobe. I'm looking at it down here on this other screen. Oh yeah, so they had, all right, they had earnings. They, yeah, they had a bad beat on earnings on Friday, on the 16th, or so on Thursday, yep. Bad beat on earnings, not a dead cap bounce, but some consolidation for sure. Lots of mid compression squeezes. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get our moving averages um, stacked back positive. It looks like it may have done that after hours. So we get that 821.34 to take place. Let's see if I can get this up here to show you a little bit. All right, nice strong recovery on Friday. I'm trying to get back above the 50, which I think we've done. We'll get some squeezes to release. And if we take out some of these previous resistance, so basically above that 556, get out of the Ichimoku cloud at 560, and then we start moving back up through, um, through that previous zone that runs from this low to this high. So instead of a supply zone, this is just a trading zone that we're gonna have to get through. I'm gonna use, I guess I'll just use this purple color here for that, right? We gotta get through this little trading zone, okay? safe because we I mean we can play up to the 200 SMA right up here at 596 that's a pretty decent move all right it's a $40 move in Adobe Adobe right talking about big names ADB not ADDB from a support standpoint um, we're kind of out in space a little bit here uh, we're trying to get back up into the weekly Keltner channel bottom. If we can do that, that's going to be our support level. Some of these slingshots, I mean, some of these squeezes right here should release to the upside. Ready and fire, fire signal. We got a high fire signal. Usually those uh, these signals don't appear above the midline. So we do have a higher fire signal, which is good. MACD crossover coming, in, coming into play. Um, like I said, we want to play this zone, this, basically this Keltner channel. We're from the bottom of the Skeltner channel to the top. And then we run into the four hour bottom and the daily bottom. But I think at that point we will have recovered, maybe set up a little cup and handle. We'll definitely see. So the move from 560, right? 560 to 580 is the move that we're looking to play. Uh, Adobe's got low compression squeezes on the mid middle time frames at 20, 30 minute uh, histogram is still light blue, so those should fire off to the upside. So what we've got is a little firecracker daisy chain effect getting ready to happen on our 10x bars, two minute, three minute, and then four, five, six will turn green, these will turn yellow, and then eventually green. Trading way down here at support, right? We actually made a new low from back in, what is it, back in the beginning of October. Made a new low, we're trying to play the recovery, rally, you know, reversion to the mean, 644. 
I'll be happy playing just to the upper side of the ATR, which is what, $28 daily ATR. So Adobe looks pretty decent. This four hour, we have to pay attention to this four hour 200 SMA bounce, right? If it bounces there, then I think it'll pull price action up with it maybe a day or two early. So don't just jump right into it. We have to pay attention, play the charts in front of us and not go into it with any bias. Contrarian, if we can't get back up into that weekly Keltner channel, I think, you know, the next stop down here, monthly mid at 520, it can get real ugly real quick with Adobe. So I think that I think we're going to see a lot of influx of capital coming into it like we did with this algorithm. Okay, uh, Etsy is the next one up on our list. And Etsy, uh, I haven't really played Etsy, but I know some of the traders in the group play Etsy regularly, and they they love playing Etsy, right? Uh, look at this great bullish divergence that has occurred here. So it occurred back on the 8th and 12th. Some of this in smaller stuff here is already traded out. What I'm looking at is the overall strength and general direction of the algorithm is in a bullish uptrend. What that means is that smart money has been net buying into Etsy since back at the beginning of uh, December. From a support zone or from a support and resistance perspective, we were making higher lows and higher highs. Kind of a weird, is this a head and shoulders? We have a dark pole level right at the neckline. So we've got a dark pool level at 217.66 at the neckline. If that cracks, then we short Etsy. If it doesn't, then it's just going to be kind of a weird little inverted head and shoulders. I don't necessarily want to say that this is a wedge. I just be careful. Um, I think this would be a safe area to go long, either here or up at this previous high. All right. Dark pool level again is at 217.66 right here, and it's acting as a neckline for this potential head and shoulders. Looking at Etsy on. All right, so let's get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, we're currently at a volume shelf on the 15 minute chart. This move on Thursday, oh, look at that move, right? 215 to 245. Obviously, there's going to be a pullback on Friday consolidation nice move up on on friday right quad witching they they pin this sucker right at 222 um stack positive moving averages we're about to get out of the 15 minute keltner or right out of the 15 minute ichimoku cloud 821.34 we got a 5200 crossover down on this lower time frame uh slingshot squeeze getting ready to release like i said we start taking out some of these highs i think etsy's got some legs on it this week okay uh, from a support and resistance perspective, Keltner channel wise, uh, we rallied up, ran into the four hour top, back down to the four hour bottom, right? Top to bottom, mid, top to bottom, mid. I'd like to see us move up and get into, or excuse me, out of this daily cloud, take out the weekly mid, up to the four hour top. The safe move would be wait to the break at 235 to go long. I think there's an opportunity here. We've got a little bit of a bull flag forming, right? It's real subtle. I wonder if this is the level. I wonder if we can take this to here. Come on. And then this back over to here. Uh, it missed it. So I was wrong on the longer term, but we definitely have a little bull flag forming. All right. This magnet thing is kicking my butt. All right. A little bull flag. We like that move to the upside. As far as Etsy goes on the favorite new chart setup, we like this. Lots of data. Lots of lots of good data. All right, light blue histograms on the one minute. We're trying to get those all to turn light blue, mid to um, low to mid compression squeezes on the lower time frame. Screen 10x bars. This is that daisy chain effect, right? Get those suckers to fire off all to the, you know, to go green, yellow, green, 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 green. Longer term slingshot squeeze on the four hour. I'm going to be interested in the 200 bouncing off of the, or the 500 bouncing off the, the 200 SMA, us getting back above the 200. So really a break about 231.14 or two, yeah, 231. Uh, above that, we have the 34 EMAs resistance and the 200. So this is, this candle right here is going to be the zone we have to trade in, right? It's a, it's a pretty decent candle. 225 to the $25 candle. Yeah. Uh, ATR of about, $15 a day. 
I'm kind of liking the price action. I'm going to maybe give it a little bit more time to set something up or it's just going to launch without us. So keep that in mind. Don't be directionally biased with Etsy. Just play the chart in front of you. And all right. Last one. Last but not least, CAR. CAR is part of IWM. IWM is poised to make a nice move in the upcoming weeks. You heard it here first, folks. Okay. Uh, nice pretty decent money flow coming into it right and uh, smart money dark pool money regular block trade money is coming into it uh, hedge fund money is coming into it they've been net, they've been buying into it since about the beginning of December price action traded with the algorithm for a little bit when I talk about divergences playing out this is a perfect example right here so we had divergence here right price started going this way algo went this way well price action went up came back touched the algo at the divergence level consolidated a little bit of divergence all these minor divergences have played out currently looks like we're trying to form a semblance of support a little bit of a wedge there so we just got to keep that in mind we're currently resting at a dark pool level coming in at uh, 216.54 right that's the level there right smack dab in the middle right that's what it's doing so We'll look for that um, to break and us to get above some of these previous highs. I think there's a little, there's a zone we probably got to clear there. We'll look at it here a little bit more on the chart. Okay. Forgot to switch over and do that quickly. So from a car space, uh, from car perspective, they had that massive rally a couple months ago. They went up like five hundred dollars or something like that. What I like about this stock, so histogram faded off into consolidation, slingshot squeeze is coming up and releasing. We held VWAP, we broke above the 15 minute cloud, we're straightening out our moving averages, eight's getting to be on top of the 21, on top of the 34. I thought I had a zoom feature here. Do I have a magnifying glass? Oh, I thought I did, maybe I can do this. All right, so. Trying to get those moving averages stack positive again. Targeting the 200 SMA at 230, right? There's a $12 move there. That, my friends, is pretty decent, right? We've got to take out previous highs. We'd be trading in this in this zone right here up to the 200 SMA, right? Looks like that's a previous high right there, uh, right there. Taking out the 200, I'm trying to find the zone candle. I think it might be this one. All right. So we're going to target the 230 level. All right. Car. So light blue histograms with stack positive moving averages have a greater than a chance, greater than expected chance to fire to the long side. Low compression, mid compression squeezes could all can start a daisy chain effect where these histograms that are yellow turn blue, these black squeezes turn red, and they all fire off. We have Green 10x fires on the two day, three day, and four day, which means we've got strength and conviction momentum on the upper time frames. Radiant fire is getting ready to fire off. We're currently trading at, I know it's a little wonky because we gotta gotta try to suck in that 550 candle, 171 to 554 in a day, right? You're gonna have a little headache after that. So maybe. Maybe that's a little bit better perspective. Currently trading at negative two ATR. We're looking to rally to the mean, right? Which is at 260, which is 21 EMA. Slingshot, squeeze, release. Good beta, $21 ATR. Love these light blue colors. We want to see those move more. Okay. So we went over the top five stocks for this week. I'm going to pause for a second and decide if I'm going to split this video in two or if I'm going to uh, just continue going. If I do decide to split it in two, I'm going to go ahead and say thanks for joining me. <laughs> I appreciate it very much. Thanks for being part of the stream. Thanks for being part of the weekly watch list. And thanks for being part of the channel. I really, truly appreciate it. On your way out the door, if you want to hit the thumbs up button, go ahead and turn on the bell notifications after you hit subscribe it helps us out with the YouTube algorithm you'll be notified anytime we put out new and fresh content okay